I've started to make a fair amount of content surrounding disturbing movies. This realm of cinema is just so interesting to me. And it's rare that when I cover these films that I initially watch the movie on a massive mainstream streaming service. I'm talking Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus. So I thought, what is the most disturbing movie on each of these platforms. Let's start with Netflix, the OG. Now, back in the day, from what I remember and what I could dig up, Netflix used to have some spicy titles readily available, but they definitely seemed to have toned it down as they grew. So for example, in 2013, you could watch Dogtooth, the original Old Boy, Human Centipede, Funny Games, Irreversible. I, wa I wanna say irreversible, but I think it's not pronounced that way. I think it's, I just don't wanna be uncultured. <laughs> and a lot more films. And I don't know what I could compare that lineup to now in present day Netflix. And I didn't want to ask you guys before I made my first part, so I just went to go look at a bunch of rando lists. And there's not a lot of them. Some names I consistently saw were The Platform, which has been suggested to me dozens of times, but never as a disturbing film. Gerald's Game, which has been suggested as a disturbing entry, but I can't confirm it because I've never seen it. And Hush, which I don't think has ever been suggested to me for anything. And it just looked like your typical home invasion stalking film. But for some reason, Hush came off as Top Gun on these lists. And listen, I'm taking all these lists with a grain of salt, because even though it seemed like they had some interesting titles, I'm also leaving out the absolute joke entries of movies such as Bird Box, Unfriended, The Open House, which I haven't even seen, but I don't know. Just a hunch on that one. So I watched Hush, and I liked it. Oh. Disturbing? Uh, let me just give you some thoughts real, real quick. I mean, I already watched the damn thing. I'm gonna kind of spoil it too, so, you know, if that ends up upsetting you, uh, definitely you're bad. I do think it's a fun watch regardless. 2016's Hush, directed by Mike Flanagan, starring Mike Flanagan's wife, Kate Siegel. Making a movie like this, seems far from easy. Our main character, Maddie, is not only deaf, but also mute. So there is a severe shortage on dialogue, which at times can struggle to keep you invested and other times highly benefit that scene, especially in a movie like this. For example, when a character is trying to survive and for some reason, something triggers the memory of the knife that they left upstairs. They'll have an epiphany with their eyes. And when it's not glaringly obvious, it's a fun game to play as a viewer. You're sitting there watching, oh, what's the plan? She's onto something. And sometimes you catch it and sometimes you don't. And I think both experiences are enjoyable. However, sometimes after that epiphany, for whatever reason, the character would just say it out loud knife which is like the equivalent of taking the time to wrap a gift then handing it to said person and saying it's a watch which is fucking stupid why'd you take the time to do all that if you're just gonna nut in my face without telling me maybe, well maybe that's not the best analogy that's not the point <laughs> maddie lives in the woods alone which already um you know why <laughs> she live in it's fine. Sarah's her neighbor, very close friend, and like 60% of all the dialogue in this movie. And at times, this movie comes off as callback central. And by that, I mean it is. Because almost every piece of information given to you in these first 10 minutes of the movie makes a reappearance in one way or another, which was interesting in some regard. Then also just got a little bit like I spy. -y. I'm just watching the movie and then all of a sudden it's just, oh, don't mind me just showing you when my friend left the phonesy. And I'm not trying to say that it beats you over the head with it but i don't know man <laughs> the first thing my eyes were glued to in these shots was this random ass corkscrew why you there mr corkscrew in what world did that wine bottle need to migrate to get opened I'm sick of the lies maddie also sidebar if maddie slams three wine bottles would we consider like you know uh, eventual d delayed and sloppy hand movement like slurred sign like she just gets so drunk she just accidentally starts throwing up the set so with a setup like this you can't drag your feet and to start the movie they do not in 12 minutes sarah lunges at maddie's door hysterical pleading for help but yeah maddie's deaf so she's just in her kitchen hulk hoganing while sarah's has her legs dropped hawkeye our antagonist doesn't want to just kill maddie because where's the fun in that he wants to mentally and emotionally hey, is this movie disturbing Disturbing or not, I kind of got shit to do. Now, disturbing is subjective. 
right? Either way, I don't see the connection here, guys. To me, this is just a horror movie at its core with no additional elements to make me feel disturbed in any kind of way. The most disturbing scene, I don't know, he steps on her hand at one point. <gasps> Laser shit looking like SpongeBob after he cracked his knuckles. That kind of made me quake in my boots a tad. I mean, it's pretty tame overall. It's a somewhat interesting concept, executed very well. Good film, but if you're trying to get twisted emotionally, darken your mental, or physically cringe throughout the entire runtime of the movie, this ain't the one. Shame on you, random three list that I kind of read through. Uh, so with that, if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. I feel like I got to watch another one, right? I, I don't even think that counted. What was the other film I said? Oh, I guess it's time to watch Hey Arnold's Wingman. I mean, Gerald's Game. I just sincerely hope that this isn't more of the same. This movie's really good. No, what else is really good? NordVPN, today's massive brand giving me money. I think you guys call them sponsors. I use NordVPN. That's just a fact. Because all my data stays safe behind a wall of next generation encryption. And my internet service provider leaves me alone. Because for some reason, someone in this house allegedly a torrented something. And then my ISP started breathing down my neck saying, hey, we're gonna cancel your service. Don't do that. We will turn the lights off and leave you in the Stone Age. That problem was later resolved. But I will say, if someone hypothetically did do that in this home, they didn't use a VPN while doing it. And essentially what they did was light a flare and signal to everybody what they're doing. Because with NordVPN, you can mask your IP and Nord does not keep track of what you do online because they do not care. No logging policy, baby. Mwah! So go to nordvpn.com slash MrGG. And use code Mr. Gigi to get a two year plan plus one additional month free with a huge whopping discount. 30 day money back guarantee. That's correct. On the 29th day, if you decide, eh, not for me, guaranteed refund. You can't fight that. Amazing proposition put out to you, good sir. And thank you, NordVPN, for sponsoring this video. Links below, by the way. Did I say that? It's below. NordVPN.com slash Mr. Gigi. Bet you forgot. Got you right back in it, baby. Let's go. Now, when it comes to disturbing, yes, Gerald's game defecates on Hush. Night and day. And me saying that is not implying that Gerald's game is like martyrs back to the hood. But I'm excited to talk about this. And yes, this will be spoiled to the fullest extent. I love the movie and a blind watch is definitely the move with a movie like this. Just letting you know. 2017's Gerald's game directed by Mike fucking Flanagan. I know. I might as well just watch his filmography. His wife's in the movie too, she's just not the main character. Gerald's game begins with a couple trying to bring back the spice, the soul, the heart into their marriage. Gerald, the husband, has set the blueprints to effectively distribute some dick. So they have a little getaway spot they make their way to and I'm invested immediately because... You bubby! Okay, let's stick to the disturbing stuff, which is kind of just the movie itself, honestly. Their chemistry is absent. Jesse is very clearly uncomfortable, and Gerald is throbbing while stationary. And their bedroom break-in is not so much awkward as it is just hard to sit through. My guy Gerald's two blue chews in, and after handcuffing Jesse to the bed, he wants her to scream. And not in the I'ma tear it up kind of way scream, uh, but more so in the, hey, remember that time I didn't mention I have a raging great fantasy? She starts to protest and Jer Bear takes that as her really getting into the role. And before Gerald does, Jesse pops off and demands to be uncuffed. And stop calling yourself fucking daddy! Gerald, justifiably upset that she's, you know, clearly prude of the year, blames her and says, you know, what if I just don't uncuff you? I mean, the fuck are you gonna do? And that's when Karma loads up the blicky and Gerald suffers a heart attack. Bang. This is where the fun starts. We are thrown into a whirlwind of disassociation, abysmal self-esteem, childhood trauma, survival, fear, death, the grim reaper, you're so bad puppy, bye. She sees Gerald again and eventually herself. It's her inner dialogue battling with each other in regard to everything in her fucking brain. And I love the way it plays out. This struggle for survival triggers a childhood memory of Jesse with her father when she was just 12, 13, watching a solar eclipse. And yes, it's very uncomfortable, especially because I didn't even see it coming. Like I was on the fence and then it finally 
solidified when Jesse said something along the lines of, Mom said this dress is too short. And then her dad replied with, No, I think it's perfect for a young girl, a growing woman like you. Or some fucking creepy shit like that. So then he brings up something like, Yeah, you used to sit on my lap and we would look at the stars. And he proceeds to do the, like the thing, like the meme thing, where he's just sitting there and he's like, What if we... No. Yeah, but what if... What if... We... What if we like tried to relive that? And you know, you sat on my lap right now and we pretend. No. No, that's crazy. Unless. And I would normally not finish describing a scene like this, you know, if I didn't need to. But it unfortunately plays an important part. She does end up sitting on his lap because she loves him and her mom's an asshole and doesn't really like Jesse. So in comes the eclipse, her dad unzips. And he cranks it solo. Jesse clearly worried, asking what's happening, as her dad just tells her to keep looking at the eclipse. Now, why is that important? Well, every detail adds to not only the repressing of this memory, but also the defending of her father after all these years. Talking about, well, I mean, it's not like he did this, he just did this. This all wrapped up with the gaslighting job and swearing to secrecy her father laid on her afterwards. This trauma and dynamic annoyingly creeping into today's choices, like choosing her shitty older husband. And it goes beyond that, and it's fucked up, and it's great. And in the midst of all this, at night, Jesse sees a seven foot handsome Squidward demon reaper monster. And he's got this cute little treasure chest with bones and jewelry, and body parts, and her mind, Gerald specifically, tells her that's death. He's got an alarm set for your Bon Voyage. And Jesse obviously is like, nah, it's just a bad dream thing. Moonlight man. And they go back and forth with that, all while Jesse is in immense pain, dying slowly in handcuffs. And after time passes and she's in full desperate mode, she slices open her hand and just destroys the fucking thing to slip it out the cuff. It was kind of like the first part of Saul, except a lot better. Sorry, Mr. Blonde Doctor Man. And she sees the Moonlight Man before she escapes, tells him he's not real, and gives him her wedding ring. Weird, right? <laughs> Bunch of other shit, this is what threw me for a loop. And I don't even know if I like this, but I'm gonna say I like this because I can't convince myself otherwise. Turns out, Big Man on campus was not the Reaper, was not a bad dream, he was a serial killer on the loose who suffered from issues that caused his deformities, if you will. He's arrested, she goes to the trial, he turns around and repeats what she said when she left that house, so there's no mistake here. She was being legitimately stalked on her potential deathbed by a gravedigger slash murderer slash mutilator. And she walks up to him, she sees her dad for a flash, her husband for a flash, and then she talks down to him confidently, shutting his ass down, letting us know that she has overcome happy ending Wahoo wa Luigi. And I know I'm not doing the movie a sliver of justice. That's not the point. I just want you to somewhat get it. These are both good movies. I prefer Gerald's game by a fair amount. And not even just for the disturbing factor. I mean, like, like Hush does a great job with tension, making your ass pucker for anything and everything. Gerald's game does a great job of that too. Throughout the movie, I felt emotionally overwhelmed i was disgusted the movie played these mind games with you and for the movie all taking place on this stupid ass little bed so much happened and i never knew where we were going next if this movie is not the most disturbing movie on netflix it very well might be the best disturbing movie on Netflix. And I think that's a discovery on its own. And listen, I'm sure many of you have watched both of these films. They're not exactly low key, but I'm happy I watched them. I'm not a film critic, I've told you already. I'm just a dickhead who watches random movies and likes to talk about it and pretend like I know what I'm talking about. Now here's the important part where I ask you, the audience, what is the most disturbing movie that you've seen on Netflix that is currently still on it as well? No, not Cuties. Although in a weird way, it's a plausible option, but you know what I mean. You guys let me know in the comments. Just in the comments, don't fucking DM me. Comments. And if I see some clear titles standing out, I'll do another part to this and we'll see if we can find somewhat of a clear victor. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Here is your...
Second reminder to please leave a like. Please subscribe because I have more content coming your way. Shout out to my beautiful patrons for supporting the boy. Appreciate you guys very much. Shout out to Francis for retweeting my last video tweet. Subscribe to my second channel, Mr. G-Dub. Subscribe to my third channel, Mr. GG Live. There will be content being pushed out through all fucking directions for the rest of the year. And I'm very, very excited about it. I hope you guys are too. I don't know what else to say, except uh, I'm tired. It's way too late to be recording this right now. So, as always, I am Mr. Gigi, and I am out. Bye.